I made a child hat and I cast customers. I like to have a name to be put on the hat. Tell me about your business. Uh, I I always have this dream of owning my own business that was the last at least for thirty years. And but in nineteen ninety five I went to Cup College and graduated in my accounting in computers. One step down and say I was working and but in twenty thirteen I decided to take one more step and go to NBCCD to um, follow my art um, in compassion. And then um, after that, I always have this dream that I like to help other people with disabilities or anybody who is capable of having a hard time getting employment or follow their, their own dreams and I want to reach out to them. And here I am and I want to uh, be there for a people of New Brunswick. Tell me what it's like to be a person with a disability. A uh, lot of struggles. And I could go back to a very young girl and a lot of people at that time think I would be able to get past grade two. And I prove them all wrong. I will be made a part holder and it holds a, a teapot or a hot dish. They told my parents I'm not allowed to have my own home or ride a bike. And I, I had to fight through this every day. And some days I feel like, um, why? <laughs> but I'm not going to do it because too many people out there need to improve on their own self because everybody has a disability in some kind of others. Sometimes it's more easy to see it outside, but people do have disability inside of their self. You want to be able to help other people who have disabilities. Most of the craftspeople who provide you with items here, yeah. they have some form of disability themselves. Yeah. Um, um, when you're drilling glass or stone uh, with these Dremel uh, type drills, you do need to use water. Water makes the uh, drill motor not have to work so hard. My name is Jocelyn Maserol and I go by the craft name um, Jocelyn Road and I do glass work among other things. Tell me about your craft. It's glass work. It's recycled glass. It started out by um, tumbling rocks, stones, because I'm, I'm always looking down at the ground, looking for something shiny or a different shape or something. This glass has been tumbled already. This came out of my tumblers. These are my tumble barrels um, that would have gone into, that would have rolled probably for at least three weeks for me to get a soft finish like that. And then, um, you know, it was all the, you know, everyone's hunting for sea glass. And it's kind of like, sea glass isn't found as easily as it used to be. There are certain pockets where you can find it. Um, and I thought, you know, like, I just broke a glass last week. I could throw it in the tumbler and see what happens. Okay, this is uh, recycled glass that was tumbled. Um, it tumbled for probably about three weeks to get this smooth finish. Um, at this point, it's ready to be drilled. It's a bit noisy. You gotta hold on to the glass. Line it up as to where you want your hole. And so it started like that. And then it's like, okay, well, what am I gonna do with this? It's too big for earrings. 
and for earrings you needed like a matching set and I couldn't cut it you know to match or whatnot but I started making pendants with it so this is the finished part it has a hole in it um, which is ready for me to use a stainless steel wire to wrap normally with the uh, before I start wrapping it I put an oil on it uh, you could use pretty much any kind of oil but I like to use an argon oil because it really brings out the color and it stays um, it stays nice it's matte but it the color really pops that way and then you know it evolved I started using a Dremel and a, a drill press to drill holes in it so that it would hang better and I use like you know your stainless steel type wire and whatnot but as time went on, it, you don't break as much glass as you think you're going to in your house. So I would put the word out if you break anything, and especially if it's got color, I want it. And, um, and then I would start going to like yard sales, looking for stuff that people are, are getting rid of. And right down to the recycle depot, I was like, do you have blue bottles? Do you have like, you know, these so the big one is uh, the gin sa Bombay, Sapphire Bombay. And it's because it's a light blue bottle. And um, so I would always hunt for different colors. So it's just a lot of threading. So then I take this. I thread it through the hole. And I like to make like a, a design on each side. And it's really hard because a lot of the, the glass today is, um, it's like glass and then it's almost like painted on color. So once you tumble it, the color is off. So you, to find the actual glass that's colored all the way through, it's, it's not all that easy. You get it in wine bottles, beer bottles, that sort of thing. So Jocelyn, like a lot of the craftspeople who sell their products at Cafe Studio, you are a person with a disability. I am. Tell me about your disability. Um, I have MS and um, over the years, I've had it for almost 17 years is when I was diagnosed. Um, and it, I have good days, bad days, but over the 17 year period, um, things have progressively gotten worse. Um, doing my craft work is one of those spaces where um, I'm free. You know, it's stress free and um, I don't have a time limit on it. Okay, there, are my piece is all done. Hey, I'm Sherry Robinson and I make huggable owl pillows. This little one, I've stuffed it and I'm just stitching up the bottom and then it's good to go. It will be completed. Tell me about your particular type of craft. Um, I learned how to sew from my aunt and over the years I just simply, I, I, I just say it's like fooling around with pillows and curtains and the odd quilt or blanket every once in a while. So I stitch the eyes together and then I stitch them on and I still have to keep them pinned. But this came across my path and, and I thought they were really sweet. Are there any challenges making huggable pillows? No, <laughs> no. I had to look up uh, the blanket stitch just to refresh my mind and get used to doing that again. You sell your huggable pillows at Kathy's Cap Studio. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel knowing your, your products are being sold there? It'll be fantastic when they sell. Um, I don't have, like I'm not, I don't have a ton of money, so I don't make these, I don't make a hundred of them at a time, but I just make a few or, you know, and just to see how things are gonna go. And I started uh, woodworking uh, four years ago here in the shop and I first started to make furniture for my wife and I, a uh, bedroom set including a headboard uh, and two dressers. I made a nightstand for my father-in-law for Christmas, made my wife a Julie box uh, as well. I've made my parents' 50th anniversary table that we, uh, the family had all signed, it was very special. Um, I've done other work as well this past summer, building vegetable stand uh, gardens, uh, a couple of headboards. Uh, um, currently, I met Kathy Page uh, at, the, uh, at her shop and I've been doing Christmas uh, crafting for the past couple of weeks now uh, for her. Uh, a couple of reindeer, uh, some sleds, Christmas tea light uh, candle holders, uh, small reindeer, cell phone holders. 
uh, nativity scenes, snowflakes, uh, just a very broad range of things. Your crafts are being sold at her craft studio. How does it make you feel knowing your, your work is being sold at her shop? I'm proud for the fact that it's given the, the tools and the knowledge to my father, and so now I'm actually able to create these things in my own shop. And if people um, you know, appreciate them, they're going to buy them, they're going to tell their friends. You know, these will be things that they'll have for many years to come. It's not a throwaway item. So you've met Kathy at her shop. Um, she's quite an enterprising woman. What, what do you think about Kathy Paget? Uh, I think it's great for an independent person to leave from craft school, um, have those skills behind her and create her own business, and then to actually involve other crafters in the local community as well, so that uh, everybody has a chance to bring their things there, um, have them on display for sale. It helps Kathy sales for her own personal things, and it uh, just promotes the community. You know, we have a lot of great people that um, do many different kinds of works. For the most part, a lot of the other craft people ha are persons with disabilities. Um, your thoughts on how Kathy has pooled these folks all together to create and sell crafts there? It's fantastic. I mean, regardless of any disability, people have many talents. Sometimes they're hidden and take a long time to come out. Other ones uh, pick up these talents uh, because they have limited uh, movement that they can do. And for these people to have their products out in the public's eye and you know be promoted it's you know it's really great i work with people with disabilities and i think it's a wonderful opportunity for individuals with intellectual disabilities or other disabilities whether they're deaf blind um, mobility issues it gives them an opportunity to um, share their talents um, everyone has a talent um, you just have to find that talent um, so i think it's a wonderful opportunity for everyone so I had an idea of creating an old-fashioned lantern that you see back in the 1800s that would have a uh, candle in that people would light. So I wanted to recreate one. And if people wanted to have it beside their fireplace or outdoors on their deck or something, I thought an idea like this would make it perfect. For you and your reindeer and other wood products you make, what sort of steps do you need to create reindeer? Um, Choosing the wood first, so there's very few knots in them. I prefer uh, clear pine. It's easier to work with than sand and, and finish. I want something as a, a little bigger. From there, I just, uh, everything that I've done is basically, I've seen pictures maybe somewhere, uh, but it's mainly out of my own mind that I've created these things. I'm not duplicating someone else's work uh, totally. And uh, just, if you're ever having a bad day, you can come out in the shop and spend, you know, get lost in your work for hours. I'll get a phone call from my wife, are you coming in at, you know, 9.30 at night? And it says, yeah, I'll be another 10 minutes, whatever. But I just can't wait to get back out here and start doing something again. Working with wood is therapeutic? Uh, therapeutic. Um, it's something that I'm creating that I enjoy very much and that I know that uh, once it's done, I've done my best with it, and if it's as a gift for somebody, they can really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, it's very heartfelt that uh, knowing that, you know, you're making someone's, um, you know, gift special. Anita, um, she, she makes um, lovely socks and slippers. Okay, I made a lot of socks, and, and these are the wool. 100% wool. I like this yarn. Tell me about your craft work and what you do. Uh, I knit, uh, crochet, and made some decoupage. Okay, and uh, I made uh, wall plates and this technique calls decoupage. And decoupage is, uh, I put uh, on, on regular uh, a uh, plastic plate, I put designed napkins. Kathy Paget sells your crafts at her shop in Fredericton. Um, what do you think of her endeavor to sell crafts there? 
Yeah, I think I little bit help her. It's little bit help her. How does that make you feel knowing that their products are being sold here? I love it. Uh, I like to see more. Uh, I like to see more people uh, come together and be like a community. These are the handmade merino wool baby booties. It's very nice for, for the small feet. That is my stuff. Oh, oh, wow. I knit and crochet. Awesome. And these are mine too. These. I think it's astounding. Like it's a real big accomplishment, and I know how hard it is to build yourself up, especially with any type of disability. It's really hard to get a lot of support. So it's it's really astounding that she could do that all by herself and really build up something big. Running this business gives you a degree of independence. How does that make you feel? Uh, important. Uh, I'm reaching out, and I I can be who I am as a person. Um, uh, to encourage my own self to be the person who I am, and I am a person who have a lot of faith to move on. And whatever I do, I won't give up until I complete all my dreams. Some of the crafts here in the store are ones that you've made yourself. Tell me what types of crafts you've made here. Uh, the weaving, uh, this way I already sold. I sew, um, um, part holder, or I, uh, knit hats, uh, or the knitting machine. I paint, can't cross stitch. I make jewelry, necklaces, um, brooches, um, see to promote new new friends work. Um, I did photography work, but whatever is on my mind, I I, I just do it. <laughs> so where did you learn to work a weaving machine? Um, I went to the University College Craft and de Design, and at first I like to go into fashion where I was in the foundation business of art, but that changed, and I picked pho photography, and I did really well in that. And at the last minute, I decided to take textile de design because I want to follow and learn more about weaving and knitting machines and how to de design my own pattern, whatever I have up here, that what come out. <laughs> You've taken on all these challenges. Yeah. You have made them work. Yeah. And now you're creating crafts yeah. from the, 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 in this, these art formats. Yeah. So would you say you're the type of person that likes a challenge and you seem to overcome challenges? Yes. <laughs> They're all so individual. So you've known Kathy for a number of years. Mm -hmm. What can you tell me about Kathy? Well, she's super kind, super friendly, um, very oriented in, in working. I know she's just totally motivated to do to do this little shop. She told me the other day that in her mind, no really means yes, considering all the challenges and hurdles that she's had to overcome. So for someone who turns uh, a no into a yes, mm -hmm. what would you say about them? <laughs> Wonderful for her. So Kathy, you made that shawl. T 
tell me how long it would have taken you to make that. Uh, when I started, uh, I started uh, in October 20, oh. it takes about two weeks um, because I was doing other things. Tell me about the things you make with your sewing machines. I do dog clothes, I can do dresses for people. When did you open your shop? October 1st, 2019. What sort of challenges did you face when you were in the process of opening up your store? So many. <laughs> um, I, I got help through the CBCD and we worked with our government and everything. And this was taking place back in April, something like that. I was still going to school. And um, all of, I'm hearing back, but no, 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 no. Yeah, I keep on saying yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and then at the last minute, CBCD say, yeah, we, we need a final word. So when CBDC finally gave approval to you, yeah. how did that make you feel? Oh, I was floating in heaven. <laughs> because that was a big hurdle. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it also shows that persistence pays off. Oh yeah, in my whole life, poor persistence. So you've been open now for a couple of months. Yeah. What sort of challenges are you seeing now? Uh, I feel that testimonies, um, it's slow coming here. And I hope we, uh, they will see that the um, only way we can grow to be a part of New Brunswick and see what New Brunswick can offer. Because every summer, uh, my family and me, we, we went to see different places around New Brunswick. And we have a lot of people who are like me. And they are not doing too well. <laughs> and they want, to do, they want to shop at the malls. And and better to me, um, shop in a local, it built up New Brunswick. <laughs> I just hope everything that she wants, she can have. She's done a lot of hard legwork to get where she is now. So I applaud her for it. And, you know, what I bring to her, you know, I, I hope will sell. And, um, you know, she... Um, wants to eventually, you know, get this bigger. What sort of future plans do you have for your shop? Um, after I get um, more people, I, I like to expand and help more people with, people with disability. And right now, I can help people with wheelchair because I have no wheelchair ramps, but I can work away on that. <laughs> but I like to have a place I can do it. <laughs>